and welcome. Today I am presenting on 4.G1. We are looking at lines, angles and 2D shapes. In this week's lesson, we are basing it on learning how to draw points, how to draw lines, line segments, rays, angles, perpendicular lines and parallel lines. We are going to learn to identify them and to draw them. In this unit, it's very important that we learn to use our rulers. There's not going to be any free hand drawing. So let's look at the point. The point is an exact location. It has no length and no dimension. As you can see in my PowerPoint, my point has got dimensions, but that's only just so that you can see it. In real life, we call lots of things points or dots. The sprinkle on the chocolate can be called a point, or the dots on the toadstool, even freckles and ladybugs got their dots, the frog and the feather. Let's look at the line. The line is continuous. It is straight and has no width and is one dimension, length. Both ends continue. Therefore, we place an arrow at both ends. In real life, there are no real examples of lines, but we call the images seen here as being lines in nature. You can see the lines in your notebook, or the lines made by the metal in a building, or the lines on a highway, or even the lines in a spider's web. Line segment. A line segment is not continuous. It is straight, it has no width, and, a, and it stops at both ends. This is what we can see in nature. We can see the lines on the tiles, we can see lines on the daisy petals, we can see lines on the wings, the and the body of the dragonfly. Fence palings have got lots of lines and so do vertical lines. The main vein on the leaf is a nice straight line as well. A ray. A ray is continuous, but it has one end point and the other end continues. Rays are actually a little bit more harder to see. If we look carefully, we can see light rays, or we can definitely see the sun rays peeking through the clouds, but we really often can't see x-rays. But we can see what they cause, and that is what we're looking at on the fish. They can give us an x-ray of the inside of the fish, but the actual x-rays are invisible. Parallel lines. Parallel lines are lines that are equally distant apart and they never touch no matter how long they are. They're continuous. But in everyday life, we can see parallel lines as a design on the carpet or in a rice paddy, metal fence, we can see two straight lines, lots of lines, trees, and bridges. Perpendicular lines. These are continuous lines that actually cross over each other. Perpendicular lines are lines that intersect each other at a right angle. So you need to remember to have that right angle when your lines cross for it to be called perpendicular lines. We can see lots of perpendicular lines on the metal fence caused by the lines going horizontal as well as vertical. On the railway lines, we have the wood going horizontal and the metal going vertically. In designs, architectural designs, the telegraph poles, for them to be functional, they needed to be put together in perpendicular lines. And some windows also show perpendicular lines, but there are many more. And now looking at angles. An angle is made up of two rays called arms or side that meet at one point. The point where the two sides meet is called the vertex. 
The distance between the two arms is the actual angle. That is what you measure. An angle is the amount of turn between the two arms. You can have a positive angle, which is made when the angle, the turn, moves anti-clockwise. And a negative angle is when the arm moves or turns clockwise. We can see on our slide that we have the vertex here. We've got the two arms. And then the distance between the arms is what creates the angle. We give lots of our angles particular names because they are very useful in discovering other things. So let's look at the right angle. The right angle is an angle created when the arms are 90 degrees apart. And this is called a right angle. Right angles are very important in carpentry, in architecture, in building. There are many, many places where a right angle is really necessary. Right angles are exactly 90 degrees. Always remember to label the angle. 90 degree angles are labelled with a square between the two arms. And you can see the square there, I have put it in for you. You don't actually have to write 90 degrees if you put that square there. It is just a known mathematic fact. And here we can see that rectangles and squares are such 2D objects if the angles and the lines form a right angle. This arrow has three. We've got two here and we've got one in the middle there because this arrow is actually made of a right angle. On the outside we also have two 90 degree angles there as well but I'm showing just the angles inside at the moment. Our right angle triangle is made up of a right angle and our diamonds have got four angles. These are just some of the 2D shapes. Let's look at the next angle. The next angle, acute angle. Acute angle is when the angle, the arms or the sides make an angle that is less than 90 degrees. Acute angles are labelled with a semicircle, as seen in the diagram, between the two arms and the vertex. As you can see, we can look at a five-pointed star and we can see that it's got one, two, three, four, five, five acute angles. Most triangles also have at least two acute angles. This particular one I've drawn to for you today has three. A trapezium has two acute angles as well. We can also find angles in nature. And on this leaf, you can see that when it was created, the leaves grew at an acute angle. And this pelican's mouth at this moment in this photo has an acute angle. We all know that pelicans can open their mouths pretty wide. The obtuse angle. The obtuse angle is greater than 90 degrees. And again, we use a circle to show and we place that circle between the two arms at the vertex. The shapes that we can see have obtuse angles is the rhombus. The rhombus has two obtuse angles and it has two acute angles. The pentagon and the hexagon, octagon, nanagon, they all have obtuse angles. The octagon as well, it shows you where their obtuse angles are. We can see obtuse angles and acute angles when we look at the clock. The clock can actually show us also a 180 degree angle, which is a straight line. And here this flower created, its petals are growing in an obtuse angle. The straight angle, the 180 degree angle. This is also known as the straight line. We can see lines in nature, in architect, 
in trees, even the crest of a sand dune and the rice paddy. Straight lines are very important for creating parallel and perpendicular lines. Our 2D shapes are all created with straight lines. The straight angle isn't actually labelled unless it's specifically when you're talking in maths with angles. We often don't label our straight lines with the semicircle between the sides and the vertex. In geometry you do, but not in when we're doing other and other shapes in maths. Thank you for that. That's all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed it. Bye for now.